And now we're going to use a Redux Saga call method in order to actually make the, uh, the Axios call. So let's assign the response for our attempt to make this HTTP call to a constant. We'll say constant response equals, and again, we are gonna use yield here and use that call method from Redux Saga to call whatever we wanna call. And Redux Saga expects for us to return a promise at this point because we are yielding a response. It's doing some magic behind the scenes that says when this promise resolves, we will then call the create lesson async method again, at which point it will pick up uh, where it left off on line 11, or if that response was an error, it'll go to line 12 and continue processing through that, that function here. So what are we calling? Well, we want to use Axios or SuperAgent or whatever you're using. And the, way, the method of making a request with Axios is pretty simple. Normally it might look something like axios.get and you have the, the URL that you're making the request to here and that would actually return a promise for you. So when we use Redux Saga's call method, we want to just provide the method first that we want to call, which is get. And then if there's any parameters that should be passed to the Axios get method or whatever method that you pass here, you can provide them as additional parameters to the call method. So for us, because you have to provide the URL for get, we're gonna provide that as the second parameter. Now, in order to make this request uh, easy, we're just going to use a placeholder uh, API or URL that just gives us some fake information back. Uh, so there's this easy one called JSON, JSON placeholder. By the way, I Googled how to pronounce this uh, and the creator says JSON, but uh, I kind of like JSON. I'm just gonna go with JSON, how's that? Anyway, you can use a JSON placeholder to get some response uh, data, just some fake mock data back to make sure that your API calls are, are working correctly. So, and we're, we're creating a lesson in this case. So instead of using get to just get a, re a payload of posts back from this from this fake data thing. Uh, I'm gonna use post and post is going to basically dispatch a uh, HTTP header that says, hey, we're creating a post here or creating a lesson here, not, not getting all the information back from it. So uh, this service says that we can send a post request to posts. Uh, these are two different things, don't get confused there. And uh, we should get a response back from that. So um, I'm gonna copy the address up here and back in our code, I'll paste it here in the bottom and I'm gonna make sure that I call posts. And instead of using the get method, uh, we are going to use the post method. There we go. If we look at the Axios documentation for post, you can see that the first parameter that you pass is the endpoint of the URL that you're calling. And then a second parameter is a object of data that you're interested in sending along with that request. So we want to send along data about the lesson that we are creating to this particular endpoint. Now, obviously it doesn't really matter for this one because we're just mocking this and we're gonna get the same response back no matter what. But in your case, you're probably going to wanna pass information about what you're creating or, or what your object is that you would like to uh, delete or whatever your, your process is. So uh, you can do that by providing a third parameter here and you can pass the information along that you would like to uh, go with that body of that request. Now more than likely this information is going to come from your app and not be something that you want to hard code here. So one nice thing about our worker saga is it actually gets past the action information from Redux. So we can just type in action here and when that action is dispatched from your action creator, uh, you will see that if you, well, I guess if we go into our app, we can see that create lesson is called here. And if we passed it information from our app, uh, whether that was a ID or uh, maybe a name or title or value from a text field, that would get passed into our action creator and then sent along uh, as part of the payload for that action. 
So in our worker saga, we can pass the action here and then access the payload for that action simply by doing something like action dot. And here we can see that we're passing, this is hard coded now, but you can get this information from your app. And what we're passing a section ID of eight. So um, I can go here and say section ID. So we'll say, uh, as the body of this request, we are going to say section ID is equal to the action section ID value. And the last thing that we'll want to do is just do a quick console log for the response. We can take a look at it when it finishes. Now, if there's any sort of error during that request, it's going to get passed to this catch block. So we want to make sure that we handle it accordingly here. Um, so if we ever get here, we can say console log uh, request failed. Uh-oh, there's a problem. Um, maybe here could not create lesson. And then uh, we want to see a little bit of information about that error, which gets passed. So we can log the error. And uh, we'll need to also handle that through an action here as well. So now we have our worker saga set up. We have our watcher saga running and our root saga is combining all of our watchers, which is only one in this case, but it's uh, passing it back to our store, which is now running everything and listening for that action to be dispatched. So if we go back over to our app and everything is just cleared out, if I hit add lesson, let's see what happens here. Whoa, we got attempting to create a new lesson via the API. We also have uh, our response here, which we console logged uh, on line 12. And we can see some information about that network request uh, that was done. So we can see it's actually doing something here, which is awesome.